Okay, I'm finally going to do a video where I dissect a GP5 filter and show you the contents. Um, so I'm going to take all the precautions I sensibly can. Uh, so I'll go through all of that first. So obviously, because there is asbestos in the filter, even if it's a low percentage and it's mixed with some other materials that aren't hazardous, I still want to take all the precautions I can reasonably do. So I'll talk you through it. So when I dissect it, I will be wearing this respirator. It's an Israeli M15. And it's got the Scott Pro 2000 PF10 or P3R filter. What this means is basically the filter itself will block asbestos from entering my lungs while I'm doing it. I also here have my HEPA filter that I'm going to turn on when I start cutting open it. And the air current should be sucking air in through there and catching it in its filter here. So again it's another precaution, it should stop me contaminating anything with asbestos if any does come loose. So again it's not 100% guaranteed to do everything because we're not doing it in a vacuum but it's much better than not having it. Here I have my tools for opening up the filter. I've got obviously um, a can opener and there's also a can opener and knife on my Swiss Army knife if I need that. There's some sealable bags there. And what they're for obviously is to put the filter medium in once I've done it because you can't throw asbestos in the bin. I'm also going to be keeping my asbestos uh, filter contents sealed up in a few layers of bags so if any time I want to get a microscope out and look at them I can do. Um, and what I have here is obviously a pocket microscope. It's not a good electric one. If I get a good electric one that can take photos, I will show you what this looks like under a microscope. But at the moment I don't. That's why I'm not going to be throwing stuff away. At the bottom I've got some paper and kitchen roll that should hopefully catch anything that I miss. So let's get on with it then. Right, okay, I've got the M15 on with the P3 filter. Let's put on this. Okay, you have to excuse the fan noise, but that's there for everybody's safety. So this is one of those things I'd really advise you not to do this at home, but if you're going to do it at home, at least do it sensibly. Right, we're going to open this filter from the top down, so... It feels like it's on. Let's start turning this. I've got lots of the paint stuff shearing off here. Alright, let's see if I've made it through anything there. Now I've got the line all around the outside, but it's not quite cut through fully. Oh wait, here we go. That's starting to come out. Right, there we go. Okay, so, the particulate filter, this is where the asbestos is, is totally connected to here, to the lid. You can see my hands already getting really dirty from this. So. I'll pop that down there, I'll wash my hands, and then um, I'll see if we can spot anything on that particle filter. Now, unfortunately, to look through the microscope, I will not be able to do that safely with a respirator on. So for the time being, uh, I will just have to do this for this here, but hopefully the HEPA filter will eliminate some risks. Let's just have a look at this under a UV light. Does that look particularly interesting under a UV light? No, not really. Um, and just a regular flashlight so you can see it a bit brighter. There you go, but you're not going to really see much on this with a regular camera, but that is the actual particulate layer. Looks like cardboard, but this is where the about 1-3% asbestos is actually inside a GP5 filter according to lab reports. So let's take a quick look at this with an actual um, microscope, which you won't be able to see on camera, but maybe I'll be able to see anything interesting on it. Now, believe it or not, using this pocket microscope, I can actually see what looks like asbestos fibres on here. Every now and then, looking at the cardboard layer, you can see very hook-like little fibres. If you look at images on Google of what white asbestos looks like under a microscope, uh, this looks very similar. So yes, I'm pretty certain this is the actual asbestos layer here. So there you go. 
if you're wondering what the asbestos layer looks like on one of these filters, it's that bit there. That's where the asbestos is contained. Right, now let's see if I can get this layer out of the filter. I don't know how this is sealed in, if I have to do another cut to get this out. But this is where the charcoal layer is contained. As you can probably hear, the charcoal layer is in this bit. So is there an easy way of getting this out from inside? Or am I going to have to now tin open the filter from the other end? I think I'm probably going to have to tin open the filter from the other end. Because I believe this is actually glued in there. If you're interested in what's here, you can see that there's kind of like one of those shower head style filters and you can see there where there's the cloth keeping the activated carbon inside. So unless asbestos has managed to leak through into this section, this is where you'd have the charcoal. Then you have your um, cotton wool to stop you inhaling that charcoal and then obviously that's the section to filter, but there's your particle filter there anyway. Okay, so the asbestos filter is now sealed in a plastic bag. Let's cut open the charcoal filter from the top, if I can get a good grip on it. Which I'm probably not, I'm going to probably have to use a knife for this section. So what I'm going to do now is switch to using my Swiss Army knife. I won't do this on camera because it will probably take a while and I'll get this top layer opened. Okay, so I had to use up, end up using wire cutters to break through here. But as you can see, that is your charcoal layer. Uh, layer. You can see all the activated little charcoal pellets in there. So there's not much else to say really about the GP5 filter. I'll be bagging all this up. Uh, they're all sharp shards now, so I'm going to have to dispose of those. I think, as you see, that's the charcoal dropping out. So yes, when people say GP5s contain activated charcoal, not asbestos, sure, there's your charcoal. There's definitely charcoal in there, like all other gas mask filters. But there's your asbestos look in that bag right there. Mixed into a thing, it's not pure asbestos, but there's asbestos fibres in that thing, in the particle filter. So, there you go, actually the most hazardous thing I've encountered opening this is all that little paint shavings that's gone everywhere, because um, this is rumoured to contain lead paint, so um, yeah, that's not great. So, I'm just going to tidy this mess up now. As I said, I'm actually going to be keeping the particle filter, I'll probably bin the rest of this, because uh, this is just, you know, like this stuff now, but... Um, the particle filter I'll keep bagged up, uh, safe and secure. And then what I'll do is when I eventually get some sort of electric microscope, I'll take some photos for you so you can actually look at some of the insides of this. Although, as I said, other people have already done it. And this is, you know, confirmed to contain asbestos. But that is your asbestos partic particle filter there. Okay, so there you go. The GP5 dismemberment video everybody wanted. This is all the dodgy stuff inside GP5 filters.